We're on problem 115. Mary's income is 60% more than Tim's income. So Mary's income, 60% more than Tim's. So that's 1.6 times Tim's income. I mean, you could write it as Tim's income plus 60% of Tim's income. But hopefully it's second nature that this is just 1.6 times Tim's income. So as Mary's income is equal to 1.6 times Tim's income. And Tim's income is 40% less than Juan's income. So Tim's income is, if it's 40% less than Juan's income, that means that it's 60% of Juan's income. right? You could view that as Juan's income minus 40% of Juan's income. That's 0.6 times Juan's income. What percentage of Juan's income is Mary's income? So let's just do a little substitution. Substitute this to t over here. So you get Mary is equal to 1.6 times 0.6 times 1. And then what's 6 times, let's see, what's 6 times 16? 60 plus 36. So Mary's income, let me make sure I get that. 16 times 6. Yes, 60 plus 36, 96. And we have one, two numbers behind the decimal point, to the right of the decimal. So it's 0.96 times Juan's income. So what are they asking? What percentage of Juan's income is Mary's income? Well, Mary's income is 96% of Juan's income. And that's choice C. This is 0.96 is 96% of. Problem 115, no, 116. That oh, looks like something I have to draw. Each dot in the mileage table above represents an entry indicating the distance between a pair of five cities. Let me try to draw this out quickly. So we have five cities. Let me see. So let's see. It's one, two, three, four, and five. And then I have to do it the other way. It's one, two, three, and then four. And then, let's see, they have the same cities on both axes. City A, B, C, D, and E. City A, B, C, D, and E. And they have some dots there. It's a dot, a dot, a dot, a dot, and then dots down that way. Fair enough. Each dot in the mileage table above represents an entry indicating the distance between a pair of the five cities. If the table were extended to represent the distances between all pairs of 30 cities and each distance were to be represented by only one entry, how many entries would the table then have? Would the table then have? OK, so this, they're saying, OK, when, this, this is essentially the case with five cities, right? You don't want to care about the, the distance between A and A. They want the distance between all pairs of 30 cities. OK, so this is, so this is the case when you have n is equal to 5. And the reason why you could say, OK, the distance between A and B is this dot. You could have also said, oh, the distance between a, B and A is this dot, right, down here. But they didn't draw a dot there because they said, and each distance were to be represented by only one entry. So they don't want to double. They don't want to double. You know, if this was 5, this would also be 5. They only want to write it there once. So relative to 5, how would we figure this out? So if you think about it, what you're going to have is what you're going to have is you no matter how big this table is, the diagonal is going to be empty because you don't want to figure out you don't want to you don't have to fill out the distance between a city and itself, right? And then if you just continue the trend that they did, you're just going to fill up out of what's left over, you're just going to fill out half of them because the other half is just redundant information. So for example, if you have 25, if, you have five, if you have five cities, you're going to have 5 times 5 is equal to 25 squares. How many squares are going to be in the diagonal? We're going to have exactly five squares in the diagonal, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you're going to subtract 5. So you're going to have 20, 20 boxes left that aren't in the diagonal. And then you're going to have to fill out half of those, right? So you're going to fill out exactly 10 boxes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's do the same exercise with 30. If you have 30 cities, you're going to have 30 times 30 boxes, which is equal to 900. You're going to 
take out the 30 boxes that are in the diagonal, so minus 30, so that's equal to 870. And then you're only going to have to fill out half of those, because you don't want redundant information. So you're only going to fill out, let's say, the top half, the way they did it in this diagram. So if you divide this by 2, divided by 2, 2, you're going to get to what? 870 divided by 2 is 435. And that's choice B. Next question, 117. 117. Which of the following has a value less than 1? So choice A is 2 times 7 over 13, 2 times 7 over 13. Well, 2 times 7 is 14, so that's greater than 13, so it's not A. B. Oh, there were D there, but I think that's supposed to be B. Square root of 10 over 2. Well, square root of 10, that's going to be 3 point something, right? Which is greater than 2, so that's not right. Choice C. Well, they have it all typoed up. Choice C is 2 over the square root of 2. Well, the square root of 2 is less than 2. It's 1 point something. So this is going to also have a value uh, greater than 1. So it can't be this. We're looking for less than 1. Choice D says 1 divided by 1 half. Well, that's equal to 1 times 2, which is equal to 2. So I can already tell you the choice is going to be E. But let's look at it. So they have 9 over tenths squared. Well, that's 81 over 100, which sure enough is definitely less than 1. So the choice is E. Problem 118. Well, it's too dark. 118. The ratio of the length to the width of a rectangular advertising display is approximately 3.3 to 2. So the length is 3.3, and the width is 2. At least that's the ratios. If the width of, this, of the display is 8 meters, OK, the ratio of the length to the width, so the width is 8 meters, is 8 meters, what is the approximate length of the display in meters? OK, so they tell us the length to the width is approximately 3.3 to 2, which is approximately equal to the length to 8 meters, right? They say the width of the display is 8 meters. So we just have to solve this as best as we can for L, right? So we could say 2. Well, the easiest way to think about it is to go from 2 to 8, you multiply by 4. So to go from 3.3 to L, we have to multiply by 4. So L is equal to 3.3 times 4. What's that? 33 times 4, or 3.3 times 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. One number behind the decimal point, 13.2. So they say approximate, and the closest one is choice C, 13. Problem 119. 119. The average salary of 15 people in the shipping department of a certain firm is 20,000 people. So the average of 15 people is equal to 20,000. The salary of five of the employees is 25,000 each. So we can even say the average of those five is going to be 25,000, because all of them make 25,000. And the salary of the four of the employees is 16,000 each. Average of four of the employees is 16,000 each. That's the salary, but we can, you know, if you average 16, four people making 16,000, the average is going to be 16,000. What is the average salary of the remaining employees? So what's the, let's think about this. So let's try to find the average of all of the employees. So if we find the average of all 15 employees, we're going to sum up all of their salaries, divide by 15, and we know that that is going to be equal to 20,000. right? That's going to be equal to 20,000. Now we have these five guys making 25,000. So the sum of their salaries is going to be 5 times 25,000. And then you have these four people making 16,000, so it's plus 4 times 16. I'm just trying to sum up everyone's salaries up here in the numerator, and I'm going to divide by 15. And then I'm going to have what? The average of the remaining people. How many people are remaining? Let's see, I've already done nine people. So there's six people remaining, right? Because there's a total of 15 people. So the average of the six remaining people times six, right? Whatever, they, whatever their average is times six, that'll give you the sum of their of their salaries and now we just solve for the average of those 6 
Let's see what we can do. So 5 times 25, that's 125, plus 4 times 16 is 64, plus, let's say 6 times, let's call it a, just 6a, is equal to 20 times 15. So what's 20 times 15? 20 times 10 is 200. 20 times 5 is 100. So it's equal to 300. And let's see, so it's, it's, we get, I just want to make sure I'm doing the math right. This is always the hardest part. So 125 plus 64 is 189 plus 6a is equal to 300. To subtract 189 from both sides, you get 6a is equal to 300 minus 189. That's 1, 119? Is that? No, no, no. 111? Yeah, 111, right? 89, you add 11 to it, you get to 200, and then you have to add another 100 to get to 300. So it's 111. 300 minus 189. And then how many times does 6 go into 111? Divide both sides by 6. 6 goes into 111. 1 times 6 goes into 51. 6 goes into 51 8 times. 8 times 48. And then 3, 30. 18.5 times. 18.5 thousand dollars is the average of their salary. And luckily enough, that's one of the choices. That's choice B. 18,500. We did everything in thousands, so we got 18.5. That's $18,500. See you in the next.